I hope I was helping somebody with that. And, and we're saying that when you when you know better, you do better. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so uh, elements and uh, elements. When I say that his name uh, is also talking about Bar Jesus, mm -hmm. the false prophet. Mm -hmm. He wanted to let him know, no, you, you don't need to uh, listen to mm -hmm. Barnabas and Saul. You know, them, them, them guys. You know, you got me. Whatever you want to know, I'll tell you. But it lets you know, no matter how long you've been in bondage or in slavery with tradition of man, before you leave this world, the Lord will give you the opportunity to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't care how young, how old, how long it's been. As long as you have a desire and God knows your heart, even though that you've been bewitched or been tricked by the cunning of man, God will not allow you to perish before you have the opportunity to, to be introduced to the truth. Mm -hmm. So now we find here that uh, 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 Sergius, he's a well-known man. He's a counselor in, in the government part, and he can give you uh, favor, positions, and everything because, uh, you know, he have that. He's in that authority. But although, even though that he's in authority, he have heard something that's higher and greater than him, mm -hmm. and he's beckoned for, I want to hear, Barnabas and Saul. Okay, so after that, uh, we find that after he tried to discredit that, didn't want him to uh, hear Barnabas and Saul because he realized that when he hear Barnabas and Saul, he's going to lose his influence. Help me, somebody. That's why sometimes people will try to discredit other folks before you get a chance to introduce or meet them because they, they're afraid of their identity or they're afraid of their, their own self because they don't have confidence in what they believe in. And so they want to try to keep you under their control, manipulation. And so they're trying to, well, you don't need to go to that church. That, that church, them folks, they ain't right. Don't go over there. Then you find out you're not going nowhere but right there in that little old cult. <laughs> Everybody else is messed up. No, nobody else is right, but where you serve at. Then when you stay there so long and then you realize that Jesus is more than where you are, and you'll find out how much you have missed out by isolating yourself. Would that be part of witchcraft? A controlling spirit that is not giving God's glory. That is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's witchcraft. So uh, he, he, he was afraid of uh, that he was going to lose the influence, and so he didn't want uh, Sergius Paulus to uh, get with Barnabas and Saul. And so when they actually finally met up together, and Paul was, and Saul uh, and Barnabas let him know that, you know, that in the 10th verse said, said, oh, full of all subtle, that means trickery, and deceitful, and all mischief, mischief, Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? Sad, but it's true. You got some people, they'll try to discourage you because they don't want to go in the Father in their faith. They don't want you to go in the Father. Well, we don't need that to start praying and fasting. We, we don't need to do that. We, we got Jesus. Well, that may be true. But because you have him, you don't know everything about him. Mm -hmm. So some things you need to do to draw closer to him. And sometimes people will discourage you from doing things to strengthen your spiritual man because what? They choose to stay where they are. And you can still respect them and love them, but do not allow no one to box you in. Don't let no one enslave you to their formality of righteousness. Because when they do that right there, they're going to turn against you from the true righteousness of God. And you have to be able to stand strong and let them know that the hand of the Lord is on your life. And then in spite if you want me apart or you want to be disconnected from me, I still need to what? Put myself in position where I can still receive and understand my purpose for living. Sometimes we get satisfied because we got caught up in our church tradition. We, we, we want to learn how to butter up peoples and, and try to get in their favor. But I'm just a type of person, you either love me or hate me. I mean, because whatever you do to try to get people to like you, you got to continue on playing that same song. Now, understand what I'm saying. You want to be respectful to your leadership. You want to be respectful to people. But don't bow down so far and make them your God, and you feel like that you can't do nothing without them. Amen. 
You know, I tell people, if you don't want to hear what I have to say, don't ask me. Because, you know, a lot of people that do things because they want benefits. And just like uh, just like uh, Bar Jesus, the false prophet here in Acts, he wanted to keep Sergius Paulus in his good hands because maybe he can just flatter him. Keep telling him how good you are. You, you know you're not doing right, but we'll flatter you because guess what? You're in position, and if we're not on your good side, maybe you'll dethrone me. But if you're afraid how man can dethrone you, that lets you know that you need to get drawn closer to God. Because then we'll go back and preach and teach what God has for me is for me. Well, if you really know that, you don't have to bow down and kiss up to nobody. Be who you are, where you are, for what you are. Amen. Question. Yes, ma'am. In that, and I'm just saying, second, in that, what she was naming all that, could that in and I'm going to say the word religion, and you said it in a way, a tradition religion. Yeah, man. Okay, a man. Mm -hmm. And we can get so caught up in that that just like uh, I'm quite sure Sergius Paulus Paulus had got caught up into what Sergius that, that what uh what Jonas Jesus, Jesus yeah had done right. And the same way it is with us. This is this is thing of, and I'm sitting here thinking, uh, just like. Easter, Christmas, and when you talk to people and try to explain that the truth, they don't want to turn. And I keep asking myself, when we know the truth, we what do, do better. better. Mm -hmm. So why are we not doing better? You know what I'm saying? If you know, and, and, and some of the preachers know the truth about that, but yet instead they continue to move on in that tradition, religion. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, a lot of times, knowing truth is one thing, but you need the boldness and the spirit of God to perform truth. See, Satan know truth, but he will not perform truth. The, the devil know truth. That's why he can quote the scriptures. And also, if you operate in truth, you have to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm reading. Do you think that man was getting paid to... You know, perform that uh, trickery stuff. Oh yeah, he's a false prophet. That's why he want to lose his position. Sure, yeah. he was getting a lot of uh, self gain and, mm -hmm. and bribery because they they want a word and they believe that he was connected to a god. Mm -hmm. They believe that you know. So and, and so, guess what? You always have to go to the pastor each time you have a headache. Pray for me, pastor, because guess what? They're, they're teaching you to keep coming at them. Mm -hmm. But we teach you to come to us so that we can give you something so you can learn how to go to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's what my job is as being a pastor, leader, or teacher, whatever. My job is to make you an independent agent with God. Mm -hmm. you, you know how to get to him for yourself. Because mm -hmm. you may try to reach me and I didn't pay my telephone bill. <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. But Jesus is still there. Yeah. Our job is to yeah. teach you about the kingdom and not about me. Okay? To equip you, right? That's right. That's right. To equip the people. Not only to have, be acquainted and have a relationship, but to be able to do the work of the kingdom. And yes, when you have to be equipped. That's why y'all need to get with Minister Charles and get uh, 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 one that this is the first stage of the message, uh, first responders. And it may reveal, are you a first responder? Are you the one that is still calling 911? <laughs> Want somebody to respond to you? Okay, so so that, that it's very enlightening if, if he want to share with you all. Okay, I, in the eleven verse, because of what, uh, so in another thing, it's dangerous when you try to get in the way of God. In the eleven verse, you see uh, Bar Jesus uh, elements. He was trying to stop uh, Sergius Paulus from hearing what God would have. Look what happened. It says now, and now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And this hand means not the favor of God, but his judgment. Mm -hmm. And thou should be what? Blind. Blind and not seeing the sun for a season. That means for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And immediately therefore fell on him a mist of what? A oh, darkness. Mm -hmm. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. See, when God when God sees that, he says, okay, now you've been trying to mislead the people too long. Now, I'm going to show you the folks you've been misleading and been, and been tricking them. You're going to be coming to ask them to lead you. And see, what happened here, if you notice this, is this something similar? 
To a song. Yeah, so. A song. He was going, doing his he thing. And he, and he was doing it out of his ignorance. You know, he mm-hmm. thought he was doing right. Mm-hmm. But see, God have ways to get you to understand his true pattern of, 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 of ministry. And so and he had to let someone, what, lead him on into Damascus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? If you're going to find, if you really read this 13th chapter, it's going to ring a bell to you. Don't you remember I told you all, you got to make sure that you grab the first four chapters of Acts. If you don't, you're going to be lost in the rest of it. Because it's going to be a referral. It's going to always refer back. Okay? Back to the first beginning. About the first couple of uh, chapters. Yeah. That's right. And we want to see that. Okay. Uh, the 12th verse says, uh, the deputy, the, Then the deputy, when he saw what, what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrines of the Lord. The deputy is referring to who? Um, service policy. That's right. That's right. want to make sure. Now when Paul in the 13th verse and the captain loosed uh, from uh, Paphos and they came to Pergamos and, and Pamphylus and John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. Now let me share something with pastors and, and, and leaders and even church members. In this thing called doing the work of the Lord, you can't panic when folks leave you. Y'all missed that when y'all read that, didn't you? You can't panic when folks leave. I, I Because people can be with you for a season and a reason. That's right. And some folks will grab, grab, gravitate to you. They really went for you in the beginning. And sometimes you got to understand when people leave, you got to make sure you're not the cause of them leaving. So we got to look on both sides. But we find here that that's when you're going to see that the dispute's going to raise on up in the later chapters, that John was with Saul and Barnabas all this time, but after they returned and coming back to Antioch, and they came to uh, Pergamos and, and uh, Pamphylus, uh, that, and John departed from them returning back to home, to Jerusalem. John said, okay, now I was with y'all. Now I want to go back home. <laughs> I, I, I want to do it. Now, it, it don't say it here, but this right here where Paul, when he, well, you're going to find his name going to become the Paul now. Luke going to start calling him Paul because he's going to start taking leadership. He had a problem with John. Yeah. You was with us. Mm-hmm. Now you ready to leave us. And you left us. Mm-hmm. But even though when people may leave you, for whatever reason is, as long as you're still on the assignment for God, he'll still have the right folks that, that are with you that can assist you and help you with the work. God will not abandon his work. Mm-hmm. Now, y'all got to understand why I say God will not abandon his work. So you got to get in your mind frame when you're doing something what God have assigned you, you're doing God's work. So if God abandoned you, he got to abandon his work. So since God will not abandon his work, he's not going to abandon you. In spite of who may leave you, who may won't support what you're doing for the kingdom of God, who may just start discriminating or, or maybe start uh, just blaspheming against the word, the, uh, talk against it. But but you don't worry about that. I'm not going to say it will not bother you, but don't let it worry you that you get your focus off what God have destined you to do. People will leave you. Sometimes God will allow folks to leave you because sometimes we become codependent on folks instead of trusting in God. Because they make our journey too comfortable for us. That's right. Sometimes God, God has to strip us from, from good help so that we can realize where all help comes from. Because we get too comfortable. I'm talking about leaders now. We get too comfortable. We get too lazy. Every now and then, when I was at Pastor at uh, Greater Fair Plains, I had three ministers there, and I was developing them. I was trying to get them and acting and do things. But every now and then, I would say, well, I'm going to do the whole service myself. It wasn't because they couldn't do it, but it was a checkpoint with me. I didn't want to get too comfortable. All the thing I have to do is preach. Mm-hmm. What happened they can't make it a service? Mm-hmm. What happened they go somewhere else? What happened to God send them somewhere else? Then now you got to, oh, it's a struggle because, what well, you got too, what, comfortable relaxing and letting them doing everything and then you just doing your part. So every now and then, it's good to go in there and just clean the church up. Don't, don't get so up and top that you can't do anything. Even though you got people that's doing just go in there and help. And when they help you, they let you know that, God, I'm still a servant. 
No matter, I don't care if you're passing 4,000 people. Every now and then, just stand out there with the trustees or the parking lot attendants and, and help car cars. Remind you where he had brought you from. And you're so grateful, saying, 